All right, we're going to spend yet one more day in this introductory section to Unit 4. Um, you might be thinking, what the vertical projectiles have to do with all this algebra we've been doing? Well, we're going to start to tie in some physics applications uh, along with just kind of the, uh, hopefully now that we've got some of the number crunching under our belts a little bit. Uh, vertical projectiles on Earth are going to behave in a certain predictable, consistent fashion. By a vertical projectile, of course, I'm talking about something that is launched directly upward, or I guess dropped directly downward, depending on how you want to look at it. But you can always calculate the height in feet after t seconds from its launch by using um, the equation h of t equals negative 16t squared plus, they call this, they call this v naught, v sub zero is v naught t plus s naught, which sounds like you need a Kleenex. Uh, but that v naught is simply the velocity at launch. So if you throw something straight up, how fast is it as it leaves your hand? That is the value of v naught. And s naught is if you were to th if you're standing on the ground and you throw something straight up. I mean, your release point is probably like seven or eight feet above the actual ground area. So the ball or whatever you're throwing is getting an eight foot head start um, when it actually leaves your hand and it's on its own. Uh, that value goes in for s naught. From here, we should be able to figure out the instantaneous velocity, which of course would be measured in feet per second. To get from instantaneous height to instantaneous velocity, you simply differentiate. Because the rate of change, also known as the derivative, the rate of change of the height is, in fact, the velocity. So v is going to be the same as h prime t, if you differentiate this, you can bring the 2 down, you get a negative 32. t is now going to the first power instead of the second. Plus, differentiating constant t in the middle term will just give you the constant. So that's v naught. And if you wanted to go one further, uh, one equation further down the food chain, you would get instantaneous acceleration. That would be measured in feet per second squared. This is going to be a pretty quick uh, derivative to take. Your acceleration function is just the derivative of the velocity, or if you prefer, the second derivative of the height. Differentiating h prime will give you h double prime. Uh, differentiating negative 32t simply gives you negative 32. Uh, plus the derivative of v naught. V naught is a constant. It's just the velocity that it was at when it was coming out of your hand. That uh, the derivative of that would be zero. So it kind of would make sense that we would have a constant acceleration, being on Earth where gravity affects every falling object in the exact same fashion. <coughs> Let's put this stuff toward an example. There's a lot of information here. They're talking about a vertical projectile. After one second of ascent, the object is moving at this velocity. What they are giving us here is an initial condition, but for v, or for h prime. So I'm going to write that down. h prime after one second equals 20. If you prefer to call it v of 1 equals 20, that's fine too. I'm just going to keep everything in terms of h so that it just gives me a more apples to apples kind of feel, or dog food to dogs. There we go again. Another second after that, so now we are at 2 seconds because we have one second here, add one more to that, you get 2. Uh, the object is 46 feet above the ground. This is a clue not about velocity but about height. The labels are there to help you. 46 feet is clearly a height measurement. So they're saying the height two seconds after launch is equal to 46 feet. 
at what height was the object when it was launched, that would be the initial height, which they refer to as, among other things, S naught or H naught or whatever. The only one of H, H prime and H double prime, the only one of those equations that even has S naught in it, which is what we're trying to find, is H. So somehow or another, we need to get to H, an equation for H. But we don't have V naught to do that with. So let's see, what do we know? We know H prime of t is negative 32t plus V naught. So we're going to need to use this to get back to H. Because this will at least tell us what V naught is. Once we know that, we can put that puzzle piece back into H because H has S naught in it, and then we will have enough information to actually answer the question. So we're going to start out with kind of the simpler puzzle, which is H prime. There's one less piece to this puzzle. I can plug in 1 for T and 20 for H prime. And now the only thing I don't know, I can handle that one unknown. And once I get to know V naught, I can go back to H and plug that information in. Then I'll only have one unknown in H. So 20 is negative 32 plus V naught. Add 32 to both sides, and that should give you 52. So this object was traveling 52 feet per second when it was launched. H of T is negative 16 T squared plus V naught T, I can now throw in 52 T, plus the initial height, which is what we're trying to figure out. Let's plug in what we know. Uh, we are given an initial condition here. H of 2 is 46. I'm going to put 46 in for H. I'm going to put 2 in for T. So 2 squared gives me 4. 52 times 2. Here we got a negative 64 a plus 104. When you combine them, you should get 40, which means S naught must be 6. The label on that is in feet. So this thing had a 6 foot head start when it was released from the person's hand. So that's the idea. It's really just a practical or a physical application behind all the algebra madness we've been looking at for the past couple of days.